Hey, you guys were really aggressive running the bases out at Southern Cal. You feel like that's a, a precursor to what you're going to be like this season? Well, I kind of mentioned it before the season started. We're going to, we're just going to take what you give us. And we felt like that uh, the catcher had a good arm, had a good release, but the pitchers, a few of them were slow to the play. Hmm. Um, and so we didn't really, to me, maybe one or two times, I think we stole, I don't know, eight or nine bases. It really was a gamble. I felt like if our guy got a good jump with the times that their pitchers were to the plate, that we could steal them. And the, the catcher would have to make a perfect throw. And in a couple cases, he really did make good throws. We just beat him. And, you know, it has to be the right guy. I mean, you look at the numbers, you know, Martin can steal, Ezell can steal, Franklin can steal, a couple other guys in there a little bit. And uh, that's what we did. You know, the wind's blowing in from left, you know, from left to right. And we weren't going to probably hit the ball out of the park to left field unless you hit one like Martin hit because it would have gone out anywhere. It didn't matter how hard the wind was blowing. But for the most part, you you had to hit it just right um, on most of, on two of the first two days anyway. And it just felt like we needed to get some guys in scoring position. It bothered them. But to answer your question, I mean, we're not going to run crazy, but there were four or five guys in the lineup that they can steal if, if they get a good jump, they have an opportunity to get there. So on the flip side of that? is there a lift just to win the road series? Which I didn't realize y'all didn't. I didn't either. I knew, I had no idea, to be honest with you. I could have told you we didn't win one last year, and I could tell you who they were against because they were all against top ten teams. And we pretty much won every Friday game and lost the next two. It was really disappointing. But for us to go out there on the road and uh, you know play a good team, and they, they have good players. I mean, you look at their guys. They're big and strong. Their arms are good. Throwing the ball 95 miles an hour at us. You know, it's just, yeah, I feel good that we won the series and we are real close to sweeping it. You know, we had a couple fresh pitchers in the bullpen, but we, they're freshmen and they haven't pitched yet. We didn't feel great about bringing them in in those situations, but, you know, we'll do a little bit more experimenting over the next few weeks and uh, maybe we can find another arm or two to help us out. You did put Wicklander in a tough yeah. situation and then he came back yeah. after that and pitched really well. He did. He pitched really well. You know, what happened there, I still don't know what happened. I mean, he, you saw what he did here. He threw 10 pitches and struck out the side his first outing. And I know it's at home and it's, you know, a non-power five team, but he still did it. And to go there and throw the ball the way he did, I mean, he just was wild. He couldn't command it and kind of saw it when he was getting loose. You know, once we brought him in the game, he threw a couple to the backstop and his curveball slipped out of his hand a couple times, kept looking at his hand like the ball was slick. And I think it was a little bit of everything, a lot of nerves, a lot of family in the stands and friends. And there's four or five guys on USA's team that he played either high school ball or summer ball with. So. Uh, hopefully he, he learned from that, and, and we feel like he did. And, and he, I thought he threw really good second time out. And, uh, you know, obviously he was right there to, to get a win. It didn't happen. But we're going to give him the ball tomorrow to start. We're going to have to piece that thing together tomorrow. And uh, it'll be a lot of young guys pitching tomorrow. Uh, yeah, how would you anticipate what's going on? you anticipate from that? Tomorrow? I think he'll throw well. I think, first off, he's a tough kid. He wants the ball, and he's used to having a a lot of success. I mean, he's one of our top recruits as far as pitchers, and uh, you know he's shown us what he can do. And you know we don't expect him to pitch very long. We just want to give him a start. Maybe he goes two or three innings. You talked about uh, stealing bases, but Casey Opitz on the flip side of that, throwing yep. people out, playing really well behind the plate he, right now. He, I'll tell you what, our catchers, both of them, have done a great job so far in in six games. But Casey, the first two games, that's as good as I've ever seen him catcher catch at our level. I mean, because of the balls and the dirt, the blocks jumping on it, throwing people out. I mean, we were we were very impressed. And, uh, you know, really the defense is what helped us win those first two games. And we had Casey threw a, you know, had a ball blocked, the, blocked the ball, jumped on it, threw a guy trying to steal. They tried to steal third. Left fielder makes a dive and catch going away from his glove, a backhand dive, a couple three in the infield. It was it was fun to watch. But Casey was, uh, was really good. And I thought Zach caught really good in game three as well. You feel like Kirst said needs to do to get going offensively. Yeah, he's the guy. I mean, you know, he's hitting probably around 200, and you know, he'd tell you he's left a lot of runners out there. Runners at second and third, one out. Runner at third, one out. Didn't get them in, and uh, you know, we just want some contact there. Get the ball to the outfield. You know, one of them struck out. The other one tapped one back to the mound, but he got behind 0-2 before he knew what happened. And kind of swinging at pitches out of the zone that are up, and you know, that I've told him that's that's your battle. You've got to learn how to stay off that pitch because if you don't, that's all they're going to do is throw it up there. And you know, he, he, he got a little better and went back at it a little bit. But uh, if we could get him going, it's uh, it's really going to help. And we know he's going to get it going. I think that Memphis pitcher you've seen in the last couple yeah. of years, what do you remember about him? 
crafty lefty. He's going to throw about 87, 88 miles an hour. Uh, wears glasses. Uh, likes to spin it. Lefties, you know, uh, he, he hasn't thrown in, in two weeks because he threw open weekend out of the pen. And then he didn't throw in the midweek game last Tuesday. And he didn't throw Sunday in their double header. So he's got a fresh arm. And they'll probably let him go as long as he can. You know, it's up to us to do a good job against him. For, for a young team, you mentioned you know, not winning a road series last year. Obviously, tough competition. But for a young team to win a road series right out of the gate in Southern Cal, how big is that? Well, I think time will tell. You know, that uh, we'll, we'll, we'll be able to tell you in a few weeks when we start, you know, when we go to Alabama and you know, playing two games in Austin over spring break and, you know, those road series that we have, uh, they've done it. They're probably not going to worry about it. Maybe people won't talk about it. You know, you guys haven't won a series in forever. That's over with, which is good. And Because I hadn't even thought about it, to be honest with you, but I'm sure maybe they're they're online and on, on uh, their Twitter accounts a little more than I am, so whatever. But uh, I think it's great. I think it's great that we, we, we knocked it out early and we don't have to really talk about it. What's the pitching plan behind uh, what we're playing? Well, we've got, I think we've got three other freshmen, two to three other freshmen we'd like to get in a game that are, uh, you know, they haven't pitched yet. We've got uh, you know, Burton, we need to get him on the mound sometime. And, you know, we got to get ready for next Tuesday and Wednesday against Charlotte after playing three this weekend. So we've got to, we've got to get these guys out there. You know, if, if we get into trouble, we could go with one of our older guys. Uh, but, you know, we'll just, we're just going to take it an inning at a time. I just hope that, we play solid defense and we come out and swing the bats. These midweek games are so important mm -hmm. for these young guys to get some uh, some reps on the mound as you guys get ready for SEC play. We need them. Yeah, we're going to need them. So it's, you know, we played six and there's three of them that I know that haven't pitched yet. We need to get out there. And a couple of them, like Burton, who's got a really good arm, but he hasn't had a lot of success yet. Uh, you know, he needs to get an inning or a hitter or two. And, uh, you know, we need to probably get Vermillion back up on the mound. Uh, he only threw one inning this past weekend. And, you know, we could we could go with cops if we needed to a little bit. Um, uh, I don't know. There's a couple others in there that are older that we could use, but I don't want to use them all because we need them for Friday and Saturday. I'm just wondering, in the back of your mind, the way Nolan has developed, if you ever worry down the road that he could get an injury and then all of a sudden you can't count on him? Pretty much every day. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's always in there. He can get hurt out of here. He get hurt in the parking lot. But, you know, he's going to be playing football, and, you know, he's – I don't, I don't, you know, I guess the injury that I, I worry about is probably not so much the throwing, it's probably the knees and the ankles and just something that you can do by stopping and starting a lot like quarterbacks do, football players do, um, you know, but he's, you know, he got a chance to be pretty good and, and, and he could be special by the time he's a sophomore, junior and, you know, he pitched in a really tough environment the other night and he didn't pitch great, but he showed that he has some toughness and he battled through it and he gave us a chance. I'm looking forward to see him throw again this Saturday and see how he how he does. And, and obviously, right now he's he's one of our guys. We would like to keep him on the weekends as a starter because I'd really like to keep some of those older guys in the bullpen because, as we found out again, uh, if you don't finish the thing, it leaves a bitter taste in your mouth. And we've got some guys that, that I feel can really finish a game, but some of them we're having to use early. And if we can keep some of these younger guys starting, it would do. I think it would really make us a better team. Would, would he be here Friday doing like? Start prep or he'll be here. He'll, bust, you know. he'll be here. Yeah. You know, he's he's going to go to. I think they've got a meeting this afternoon at 4:30 or something that he's going to go to. But we'll be done by then. Um, you know, as far as Friday, I know. You know, he he'll be here because he's got to get ready to pitch, and he needs to see them and see what he's pitching against. Uh, you know, you can look at paper and scouting reports all you want. I'm not big into them. I am as far as maybe getting me started, but I want to see. It. <clears throat> I want to watch him take batting practice in field, and, and I can answer my own questions. But, you know, pitchers, they, they need to see it. And, and we're working it out. They've been good with us, and, you know, they, they know that he's a big part of our team, and we know that they got to have him too. So uh, we'll just we'll work it out. There's a chance they thought he'd be there next Tuesday. Yeah, I mean, I, I, he'll probably be there Tuesday. You know, he'll – Monday – Sunday or Monday, if, if we end up playing early because of the weather – uh, Sunday or Monday will be our day off, depending on when we play. Uh, he'll get his bullpen in. Uh, he could come and work and work out with, with us a little bit if we're doing some pitcher drills, defensive drills, and then if he needs to move on up there, because they practice really later than we do. What was your assessment of that eighth inning pop up, uh, Kerstad, Kenley? Did you talk to them? Yeah, uh, I talked to one of them. Yeah, I didn't want to. 
basically in baseball lingo, I didn't want to blow both of them up because we were still in the game. Uh, but I talked to Kinley about it, and I talked to him about a couple other pop-ups that he didn't handle real well that he caught. Um, he called it too early. He drifted back on it. But bottom line, the right fielder needs to call him off and take the ball. And that will be addressed today in practice. And, you know, it's very frustrating. What was even as frustrating is their scorekeeper scored it a hit and an earned run, which that's an error if I've ever seen one because that was an easy play. DH, do you keep going Goodhart and McFarland, or you look at someone else there? Uh, you might see uh, Trey Harris DH tomorrow, because okay. Trey Harris swung the bat extremely well in the fall, but he's been hurt. Mm -hmm. Very first practice, he runs into that wall down there uh, and hurt his back. And then the first day back, about a week later, he's back practicing, he, uh, he tweaks the back of his knee. And so he really hasn't done, done anything. He took batting practice with us, but he wasn't, he's not full speed running yet. He may be close today or tomorrow but he's been hitting the ball extremely well in practice, so we're excited to get his bat in the lineup. Yeah, we couldn't see very well on TV because they had that static camera, but yeah. I think in game two there was a, Franklin was on third and Casey Martin yep. hit that excuse me thing. It, looked, yep. it was pr actually better than a bunt probably, but he yeah. didn't score and we didn't see what happened. Yeah, basically the play was you have one out, you have Martin up, you have one of your fastest runners on third, um, I don't even know if there was a runner on first, but he squibbed it up the line, and you have Kerstad waiting to hit. Um, they had their first baseman way up in front of the back, third baseman's up, so we told the runner, unless you see a high chopper, see the ball pass him out. So if Casey smokes one to the third baseman or hits one hard to the first baseman, he's not going to go. Well, if it would have been a bunt, it would have been easy to score, but it was a full swing. He hit it off the cap. It was spinning. He came down the line. He wasn't going to go, and as we told him not to. And the ball spun out of the first baseman's glove as he went to go make the tag. The only thing Franklin could have done different is maybe held his ground a little bit and watched the play a little longer instead of starting his movement back to third. And once he saw the ball come out of his glove, I think he could have scrambled home. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's learning, but he did what we asked him to do. We didn't want to run into an easy out at home with, with Heston coming up, even though it might have been with two outs. We just feel confident in him. And just the way they set up their defense, it worked for them. Um, yeah, that would have been a nice one to get. Are you surprised with Franklin's offensive production? You know, I've been watching him since he was in ninth grade. Kansas City kid, played, played ball on the same team as my nephew growing up, who's now in a Division One school in another state. And so I've seen him play a lot. I guess to answer your question, I, I, I'm surprised maybe just a little bit because in the fall it was up and down. But we've uh, we stood him up. He's, he's standing taller because he used to top spin the ball. He'd come, kind of go up to the ball when he hits. Stood him up. He's gotten comfortable with it. And he drove a ball off the right field wall that almost went out of the park. He hit one down the left field line. He singled up the middle. Uh, so I've been very impressed with him. His defense has been incredible. His catch down the line probably saved the game for us in game one. Uh, just a, a good player. And uh, now that he's hitting, I like him down there in the nine hole. It's almost like another leadoff man for you know, our one and two old hitters to drive in. And he, he's probably our best base stealer. And, you know, he uh, just has a little bit of a knack over there. So if he gets on, I'm going to keep running him. Do you have a timetable for moving easy out of the second? It's really it would be up to him. It's that arm. Um, he's played really well at first, obviously. I mean, I told him on uh, Monday before we opened up on Friday, I said, hey, what do you think about this? This is what I want to do. And I told Kenley the same day, too. He hadn't taken a ground ball second since probably last year sometime. And it's worked out because Nesbitt's more comfortable at third. But, you know, I would love to put him out there. I don't know if he'll go there. You know, he may stay there. Um, when you really look at it, and I've been an infielder and an infield coach, the move might be if the arm comes back, we, we play him on the cut of the grass and put him at third base because it's a shorter throw. Uh, so we're just looking at some things. If Nesbitt keeps playing like he is and hitting, it's been pretty good. Uh, but it's, right now I have a hard time moving Kinley off second. I think he's been really, really good. And then Casey Martin, I mean, he's had a couple yeah. of bobbles, but he's a new position, is that? What? Yeah, a little bit. You know, it's about being consistent, and that's a p position that you want somebody consistent, but you want somebody that's really athletic. And, you know, it, it, the interesting thing about the errors that he's made, he's made a couple bobbles, and he had one where he threw the ball short when he was moving to his left. It's They haven't hurt us yet. You know, he's going to make some plays that other guys can't make. He made one the other day at USC where he came in a chopper to his right 
and he threw the guy up by two feet or two steps, and you were kind of going, wow, I didn't know if we were going to get him. And, you know, it's because he could get to the ball so quick, and he's got such a strong arm if he gets a proper grip on the ball. And uh, so we're just going to have to live with it a little bit. You know, I, I just feel like right now it's the right way to go. And uh, he's getting better. He's learning that that it's a, you know, maybe a little tougher position than he remembered because it's it's the toughest infield position. And you don't have time to bobble a ball. You have to feel it clean and get rid of it. At second, you can. At third, you can most of the time. That position, man, it's it's one and one or nothing. Hey, coach, just in curiosity, did you hear about Daniel Gibson hitting for the home run cycle yeah. over at softball? How about, how about that? That's unbelievable. And I think it's pretty interesting because she's really not a home run hitter, as far mm -hmm. as I knew. Uh, but you know, that's this game's nuts. You know, when you're playing with a round ball and trying to hit a, hit it with a bat, anything can happen. But happy for her, just happy for the softball team. Yeah. And uh, and they got it going over there, so it's fun. And I went and watched her play last year. Mm -hmm. At the end of the year, really cold day. We had a day off on a Sunday, and I was just really impressed the way they play. They play hard. They're they're pretty mean. Their coach must be mean or something. I don't know. I don't know. Courtney's done a great yeah. job since she's been here.